people in chat are talking about the easily thing. We could talk about that a little bit too. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm as an artist, I have some opinions on it actually. Um, it's a little practices. bit about it. I, I don't know everything about it though. So, uh, the pra is, is the practice of taking signatures off art normal? Easily seem surprised by the action, but other people on Twitter said this happens a lot. Uh, you know, here's the thing. This is my experience as someone who's done a lot of freelance work. So I've done work for Chaosium and Call of Cthulhu. I've done work for Mongoose and their second edition Traveler. Um, I've done work for Green Ronin and the Expanse game. I've done like lots of bigger named games. And the thing that you do is you often, when you, and I'm, sure, I'm sure easily did the same thing here, was you, you, you sign a contract about the work order and what, you're, what you are expecting and what's expected of, of you and what you can expect from the client that you're dealing with. And then, you know, you are selling them the art. So, like, if you are, for instance, I've done work for Vic, you know. Vic and I never made a contract, but it's still the same kind of thing where, you know, you pay me for art and I give you the art. Now the art is yours to do with as you want, yeah. you know, and that means that you can edit the art. You can use it however you want. In most of the contracts I, I've signed for art, it said that the client, once money has exchanged hands and the job is fulfilled, they're able to exploit the art however they feel yeah. uh, that best benefits them. So, you know, that's, that's just, uh, that's just how it is, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily unusual. Like my first book has over 150 pieces of art in it. And like uh, one of my artists had his signature in there was like his name at Instagram.com. Like, you know, it had like his, some bullshit there. Like that was like, mm. that doesn't, it doesn't, I, I'm sorry, man. I got to take that out. It doesn't like. You know, when you're flipping through a fantasy RPG book, you don't want to see Instagram. some reference to yeah. Instagram. You know, yeah. it's like he's going to be mentioned in the credits and given full credit. There's like a whole credit section with his name, and like thanks and like all this stuff. Like he's in there for sure. But like, you know, I don't people don't need to see his Twitter handle in the artwork. That doesn't make any sense at all. And yeah. like the, all the artists I've worked with have been perfectly okay with that. I haven't had any problem with that. But now Jeff Easley is a, like a huge guy. Like he's yeah. like Larry Elmore, you, you know, he's one of the top three of all time. So like he's has some kind of celebrity status. So removing his name might be a, a bit different than just removing Joe Schmo's name from Iris, you know. So like I could see it maybe from his perspective, like people might be pissed because he's such a historical icon for D and D, but just for well, almost any other artist, I don't think it matters. Well, the, the, this kind of comes. Oh, so good. Oh, so, so I think sure, it's a respect. So. <laughs> it's all good. I think it's a respect thing. Like you know, he's, uh, yeah, Mal Mal Malachi here has it. You know, Elmore Parkinson. Uh, easily in Caldwell, you know, um, and Otis. I like Otis's artwork too. You know, these guys are like legends. Honestly, if, maybe for some D and D people, if Easley's name was still on that poster, they might have made it more attractive to people. I don't know, but um, it comes down to to like they own the art. That's what happens. The the thing with Easley though that he could do, and this is what a lot of magic artists do. And well, general art, artists in general, if they're not digital artists like me, where they're painting digitally, um, they and they're doing traditional like easily, they get to keep that original painting. So often, what a lot of these guys do is they they get paid their commission fee from Hasbro or Paramount, whoever hired whoever commissioned this illustration, they get their commission of that. They get to keep. They send the scan or the picture, the high quality version. They get to. Hasbro, Paramount, whoever gets to use that version, but then easily gets to keep that physical version, and he can sell that on eBay. He can sell that at an auction, and get and get lots of money for the original version um, as well. And a lot of artists do that for like their, their magic cards, for D and D artwork, all of that stuff. So it should be noted that Wizards of the Coast is actually fairly, supposedly fairly unusual in the industry by allowing artists to do that. Like, I've heard that that's actually not some, an industry standard. It's, like, something that only they do. I mm. don't know, but, like... 
I've no, heard. Of, I think a couple other companies do it, but yeah. I, I think the problem is that this comes on the, on on the heels of like the uh, uh, like uh, you know um, the guy that made Forgotten Realms. His name is escaping me for some reason right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Like he wasn't credited, like all that stuff. So it's kind of just like people are taking it at another like sign that Wizards is just like snubbing the original creators while they're yeah. profiting off of them. Plus, people said it's kind of weird because Wizards usually doesn't remove uh, signatures. Like, if you look at, like, you know, uh, art and, like, the older books, like, the signatures is there. Like, in my 3.5 book, the signature is always there. Uh, they keep the sig signatures on um, Magic the Gathering art and stuff. So to suddenly remove it is a bit weird. But, I don't know, this might have been, like, you know, some, some branch, like, that's dealing with the movie that has nothing to do with the rest of Wizards of the Coast, so... Well, apparently it was it was Paramount that did it. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, it wasn't wasn't Hasbro. Yeah. So who who knows? But I I mean, it's not to me. It's not uncommon. You, mm -hmm. you know, I I would get as an art director, for instance, like what Greg just just said. If it, if if there was someone with like a that had like their Twitter profile like right in the middle of the painting, I'd be like, yeah, sorry, bud. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to Photoshop that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to crop one of your signatures once when I was working on uh, Sin City and I was using that, that free image that you did from oh, yeah. uh, Liber Art and your signature was on the bottom, but I had, to, like, I had to like shrink it to make it fit on like the A4 like size. And I asked you like, hey, do you mind if I crop this out? Because I kind of have to. And you're like, oh, that's fine. But, you know, I, I felt bad about it. So I asked you first. Yeah, so, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> those, all those images are in the Creative Commons. So like you can yeah. do with them as you want anyway. So yeah, that was that was my gift to the world. <laughs> <laughs>